What's going on, guys? <clears throat> okay. So let's start. So basically, for this video session, um, it's going to be different from the last one. It's going to focus on Oromi at the region, and what do we? What is our uh, vision for the region as far as uh, regional integration, uh, maybe a certain, some type of union, economic union for the future. We need to have this political imagination, think about what's going to happen 20, 30, 50 years from now. What is the next step besides nation states? What is the best, what is the transition be, um, after nation states? What is the best interest of the region? What is the best interest of Eritrea? What is the best interest of Oromia? Um, so let's start with the OPDO, the Oromo People's Democratic uh, you know, organization that was <clears throat> pretty much created by the TPLF regime in the early 90s. Now, the history is, is widely known uh, now. As, has anybody pretty much read the Addis Standard paper, the long paper? It's very lengthy. I posted it on my page. It gives you a lengthy history and developments in the Oromo region um, as far as the OPD becoming more nationalist and more uh, assertive than the, the past. Now, um, <clears throat> the history with OPDO is pretty much created to salvage and maintain the Abyssinian secular state. It's not meant to assert nationalist, Oromo nationalism autonomy. So it's going away from the original, uh, OPDO, OPDO is going away from its original uh, uh, mission and goal, which was set by the TPLF regime. The TPLF regime uh, pretty much created OPDO as a Frankenstein in the beginning as a way to control the, the Oromo region and give a sense of uh, legitimacy within the Oromo uh, region. Now, this whole creation by OPDO as the added standard, pretty much the paper asserted that the whole creation of OPDO was pretty much the counter OLF, Oromo Liberation Front, efforts to uh, focus on the Oromo region, uh, self-determination, the struggle for Oromia to become its own state or independent from that, uh, declare independence. So that, or autonomy, pretty much, it was a counter to OLF, the Oromo question. question. Now, due to OLF, uh, bad strategy, bad leadership, um, the TPLF made gains in Oromia and set up OPDO. Um, I think that there's a lot of reflection we have to do. How much do we play a role in uh, EPLF? How much did it, do we play in regards to this whole uh, OPDO situation? How do we do harm to the, the development in Oromia as far as OLF? Uh, could we have done a better job to make contact with OLF, progressively reach out to OLF instead of uh, help uh, uh, TPLF. It is be, it is to be noted that it was the TPL uh, the TPLF was able to enter the Oromo region with EPLF armor. EPLF was active in helping uh, you know capture Addis Ababa and capture the South because of the EPLF uh, armor. It has to, without EPLF armor, TPLF would have, have not entered Addis Ababa, would not have entered the South. Now, uh, <clears throat> the Derg, former POW who were part of a, were stationed in Eritrea, were handed by EPLF to TPLF, and then they pretty much uh, created this OPDO. So, OPDO currently, uh, the leadership is different. They're younger, as the Ed Standard paper has stated, the analysis and commentary and uh, the long, lengthy paper that was posted on Ed uh, <clears throat> Standard in regards to OPDO. Uh, it gives the impression that this is, these are the young uh, generation who are pretty much nationalists, more assertive, they cannot be controlled, they cannot be tamed by the TPLF. So I pretty much liked the, the, the paper and it was well read, it was very, it's very uh, well researched and lengthy and I recommend everybody read it. But I think I'm very cautious to overly trust OPDO given that how it was created by the uh, TPLF regime and its position is totally contrary to the question that uh, the, pretty much in contradiction to the Oromo self-determination because OPDO was created uh, to salvage the Abyssinian settler state. Uh, so that's something that um, 
I I view it I view it differently. I think there's a lot of questions about intentions of OPDO. Um, there's there's uh, at at the moment within the the struggle for uh, Oromo and the diaspora inside, there are there are elements who want to pretty much uh, want to salvage the Abyssinian territorial state and keep the Oromo Oromo within the Ethiopia. Uh, Ethiopian settler state. So those are the elements who are at the forefront. And um, the nationalist, uh, the nationalist elements are pretty much, um, I, they're not at the forefront, they're not active as I as you, you think they are. Um, so most of the situation and development of Oromia is led by a certain element that want to uh, work within the Abyssinian settler state. There's not that much focus, uh, a priority on decolonization, and the main point is there was a get there's a, there's an um, getting away from prioritizing decolonization within the Oromo struggle, and the elements that are used to focus on the de uh, decolonization, meaning uh, bringing uh, the land, the Oromo land, back to the Oromo people, giving pretty much the culture, you know, asserting the culture. These are certain elements that OPDO is for, but it's not, it doesn't have the same, uh, it's not overly focused on decolonization to that level of OLF and the uh, certain uh, nationalist element. Um, so that is a concern because the Edis standard paper made an assertion that it, the OPDO could be uh, in charge of Ethiopia, there could be an Oromo uh, prime minister within Ethiopia. Now, it's very, I have to question that position because it's very concerning for us. What does that mean for us, the region? Um, if, they, if somebody takes over, Oromo takes over Ethiopia, does the whole question of hostility, hostility uh, against Eritrean independence end because of uh, there's an Oromo uh, nationalist in charge of the settler state? I, I highly doubt it because Ethiopia as a settler state was created on behalf of the Abyssinian. It is meant to uh, accommodate only uh, the Abyssinian, the Amharu, and the Tigrayan region. It, it is not meant to function in the hands of the Oromo. You know, it's created on the backs and genocide and killing of the non-Abyssinian. It is in the service of uh, the Oromo, I mean, the Amharu in the uh, Tigray region. So Abyssinia, I mean, the Ethiopia as a settler state, it is meant for the service uh, of these rulers. So. It's a house built for uh, them. It was not meant for the Oromo people, or Oromo uh, leaders. So uh, it's very, it's, it's very concerning because what does that mean if an Oromo takes power uh, of the settler state? You know, it's a tool, and our, how do we know? How can we be assured that uh, <clears throat> that the same issue that we have had for the the last decade as far as sovereignty, independence, territorial integrity of Eritrea, independence, we don't know, we don't, we're not, we cannot be sure because uh, just because an Oromo is in power does not mean the old issue would not, uh, would be solved all of a sudden. So that, that's something that uh, I'm concerned about. And plus, uh, <clears throat> OPDO engagement with the, the Amharu party, AMD, uh, I can't actually the acronym, so the Amharu party that is, you know, under the TPLF regime, the Amharu region, they've been have been uh, making contact, warm contact over the last few few weeks and months. So the new OPDO, as you know, I stated in the paper, they're making contacts. Uh, but the underlying issue is the Amharu region, the party that is uh, they making contact with. While this is a sen sense of uh, sentiments and um, you know unity and trying to pretty much have a united front against the Ethiopian, uh, the TPLF regime, the same issues will be a problem. How do uh, the underlying issue is within the Amaharu party, they still haven't let go of the question. They don't, how do we know they will legitimately uh, uh, pretty much want, share the same sentiment as OPDO as far as autonomy and, uh, you know, Oromo nationalism and the, you know, the, the transition in the future. So we don't know that, and it's concerning that even though there is, this is, it makes sense for OPDO to reach out to the Amaharu party, 
uh, it's concerning because what does that mean? If there is an alliance, how do we know if OPDO and these Amharu party get together and they say, okay, well, you guys can become, uh, uh, you know, you can have certain autonomy, but as far as the question of Eritrea, we have to we have to make an alliance and uh, try to reverse Eritrean independence. We, we don't know this uh, scenario. So it's a legitimate question to be concerned about the development in the, in the region with OPDO and <clears throat> the nationalist uh, uh, block within OPDO. So my criticism and concern is more is um, given that OPDO was created by the TPLF regime and uh, by, you know, Abyssinized Oromos who pretty much want to salvage the Abyssinian state and work within the Abyssinian settler state and those who pretty much the OLF and its supporters in that base who had uh, pretty much a uh, decolonization position are are pretty much not at the forefront of the Oromo struggle. So it's concerning because what does that mean for us? What does that mean for the region? I think uh, this con this cr concern and criticism is separate from uh, supporting the Oromo struggle. I still believe in supporting the Oromo struggle. And they have uh, whatever path they take, uh, whatever decision that they feel this is all they want to trust OPDO that is their choice but we still have we have to show our concern and let them let them know what is our concern so I just wanted to say that uh, and another concern I have is okay there is a segment and elements in the diaspora who are pretty much supporting the groundwork the student movement and the farmer m movement and we have to assess the class elements and the struggle with the Ottawa region now. The, the poor farmers and the peasant, I mean, the, the poor farmers and uh, the student movement, they, it was pretty much led by them. They were the ones that are dying. It's poor students, poor, uh, it's not the land owning uh, Abyssinized Ottawa or the privileged in the diaspora who are uh, moving or dying, making this sacrifice. So I'm concerned about what about this political Abyssinian Oromo and the diaspora who have these views of wanting to salvage, salvage the Abyssinian settler state? They are not focused on decolonization, more demarketizing the Ethiopian settler state. That which, if you don't decolonize Oromo yet, you can't, you can't have liberation. There's, there's, there's not the logical transition. The decolonization is the first priority. That's what uh, Eritrea has done, pretty much. Uh, liberated itself, disconnected, and then uh, kicked out Ethiopian colonialism and re restored the land ownership and everything is in the hand of the Eritrean people. Now, the Oromo people, they they have to discuss this issue. Uh, this is their issue, but we have there's nothing wrong with making concerns and commentary on our side. So that's that's my two concerns is what, how can we trust OPDO? How do we know um, those in the diaspora who are leading, who are the most vocal, who are part of the media, uh, the Oromo, um, who are, I feel like they're Abyssinian Oromo who have these, they want to demarketize uh, Ethiopia without decolonization. That's my concern is uh, if Oromo is not, Oromia is not decolonized, we have an issue. We cannot, the region cannot be stable. Um, I, I don't think that it can be stable for Eritrea if the the question of the Ethiopian settler state is not answered without decolonization. So that's my concern. Um, so the Ottoman self-determination, like I said, it, there is a current struggle and the current tide is the one who, the one who are leading the current, uh, uh, who are the most vocal as far as the Ottoman struggle in the diaspora, the, one, the ones who are the liberal, Abyssinized uh, Ottomans who Despite having these nationalist fervor and uh, you know views, they still hold on to. They don't want to decolonize uh, Oromia on so many levels. Um, so that's that's a concerning uh, position they have. Okay. So another thing is, how do we envision a regional integration for the Horn of Africa? And in, in the last video, I made <clears throat> points about my thinking is okay. We want regional integration. We want economic uh, union. Um, that is the logical step. You know, the, the transition involving of the region has to be by Eritrea, um, the Amharo region, the Tigray region, the Oromo region, and you know, pretty much having an economic union of poss uh, you know possibilities. So we have to push ourselves to. Uh, 
have a political imagination about the future, what is possible, because at the moment, just because the the Ethiopian, the, the TPLF regime has soured this uh, talk about regional integration, which was a lot, was gaining a lot of momentum in the 90s. Now, because of the war and their destabilization and attack on Eritrea, it has left a sour note on the Eritrean people. So <clears throat> we have to definitely talk about regional integration uh, and bring that back to the fold as a counter to Abyssinian fundamentalism. Uh, Abyssinian fundamentalism has to be countered with actual regional economic integration that it respects uh, Eritrea independence, that respects Ottoman nationalism and, and any type of self-determination by non-Abyssinians. So this idea has to be dissolved first. And then there can be regional integration, a union of the Horn of Africa where th there could be economic union. So as many possibilities and uh, configuration that's possible as far as the integration and union, economic union of the Horn of Africa. So we can't move forward without Oromia decons. If you can, it cannot be, it has to be decolonized. Uh, the Oromo people will have to assert their land back, their economic, uh, you know, their right to pretty much determine their economic policy that has to be asserted. So we can't move forward until the, the Abyssinian settler state uh, is, you know, has to be questioned and the Oromo struggle has to be uh, has to reach to the level where it is fully decolonized. The land is returned to the Oromo people. Uh, they determine their own political and economic future. Their language is asserted. So when that happened, we're able to have a regional integration. Um, we don't want a regional integration that is uh, centered in Addis Ababa, in which everybody has to speak Amharic. We don't want that. Or the political establishment is led by an Amaru speaking uh, ruling class. We don't want that. We want a uh, multi ethnic, multi uh, multi state region, uh, regional integration. Is that impossible? No, it's possible. And um, the way we can do it is we, we have to be honest about what is the, the threat to any type of regional integration. It's Abyssinian fundamentalism. The whole idea of Abyssinian fundamentalism, fundamentalism is uh, an counter to uh, Eritrean independence and it, it goes counter to Ottoman nationalism. So we must dissolve this issue, uh, decolonize the settler state, and if they decide uh, they want to be together, and that's their choice. But it has to be the era of Abyssinian the Amharu rulers centering themselves in Addis Ababa has to be over. The Ottoman people have to assert themselves and that's their land. That's the only way we can have a future vision of a regional integration because at the end of the day, despite our hostility coming from Abyssinians, we have made contact and it is, it is our history. So we must not oppose and feel sour about uh, wanting to integrate and having this vision for our future in our region, the Horn of Africa of integrating uh, Eritrea, politic, I mean, not politically, economically, and the <clears throat> the net gain of that, this advantage, uh, I mean, advantage of doing so. So let's not let's not be sour and because of the TPLF regime and it's uh, all this destabilization and uh, it has left a sour note, like I said. So um, so yeah. I just want to make that clear point for today. All right, guys. So those are the, the few points. So uh, before I go, I just wanted to summarize what was my point. It was about how do we know OPDO, since it was created by TPLF, how can we trust them? Uh, where is this leading? Where is the development heading? Because the, the, one, the elements were pushing OPDO, how do we know is not in cohorts with the TBLF regime? How do we know this whole thing is pretty much to salvage the Abyssinian settler state and continue the old system, which, you know, is very, it threatens air chain independence. It threatens the, basically the self-determination of Ottoman, uh, regardless, even if it's OPDO leading it. We don't, how do we know this is not meant to fully liberate Ottoman, and give it self-determination. That was my concern with OPDO. Um, this second current concern was the um, 
the elements who are in the diaspora, the Oromo uh, class, intellectual class, they are there are certain elements who are Abyssinianized, meaning even though they are against the TPLF regime, they are for demarketizing the Ethiopian settler state instead of focusing on decolonization, decolonizing uh, Oromia. And the party, it, the priority is uh, to uh, demarketize and you know the house which 